Greetings hobbyists, this is Artisans of All, and in this tutorial we're going to have a look at messing around with some booleans, specifically how to fix them and how to do a couple of other funky things using Mesh Machine. In a past tutorial we've had a look at how to design this shield, how to bend it and flex it to make it more easy and how to make this filigree that we can then add to it. Links to both those videos will be coming up in the top right hand corner and you can also have a look at them in the description if you haven't seen them and want to know more. But importantly one of the things we did when fixing the filigree, which we did just here, is that we're fixing some of the nasty geometry that happened when we were booling these together. And we did that manually, but I did want to have a look at an add-on that we can use to fix this called Mesh Machine. Now Mesh Machine can be purchased on Blender Marketplace and other places as well that you typically buy your Blender add-ons. And I will be clear, it is not one of the cheapest ones. Full disclosure, I paid for this when it was on sale, but I will say now having got it and used it, it is worth every penny if you do a lot of hard surface modeling, especially booleans, as it can make the cleanup so much faster and so much more efficient. And you can also do some really fun things with bevels that I'm not gonna go into today that are also really useful. If you do want another tutorial on what it can do with bevels, then please do feel free to ask in the comment section and I'll put a tutorial together. So we're gonna look at this in a couple of ways, but the first thing we're gonna do is just have a quick look at the problem here. So I've got this filigree type detail that I've created using a curve. And again, that is in that video on making filigree. And I've got this other one here, which I want to join to it. So simple matter of selecting one and the other, control and plus, and it doesn't like the exact, so I'm gonna change that to fast and everything seems to be fine. Now I'm gonna come on the original object and press H to hide it, and we've got our object here. And if I go into vertex mode or edge mode, we can see all of the information that's here. Now, because this is not perfect, we've got some of these vertices that aren't aligned, and we're definitely gonna have some problems here where we come to do our 3D print checks. Now at the moment, this doesn't look like the worst thing in the world, but it is going to still take a bit of time to clean up, moving all these vertices along. And this is a relatively mild example. I haven't made this particularly high poly, but fixing each one, going GG, moving it along to there, and then GG, moving that along to there, and everything takes a bit of time. It gets a little bit annoying. And this is where Mesh Machine comes in. So let's go, say, for example, on this side. So I'm going to go into Edge Mode, press Y, and that's gonna bring up the options for Mesh Machine, and I'm gonna go Select and L Select, and you'll see that this selects that whole edge loop there. And obviously this is really useful. So if I was to come off of that, press Alt and select here, this is not gonna work because Blender gets confused about where the different edge loops are because everything isn't quads. So I'm just gonna come in and do that again. Select, L Select, I've got this selected, and this is where this gets really flashy. If I press Y again, and I go to Boolean Cleanup, we come up with this option here. And all this does, as you'll see here, is we've got the red bits or the red vertices, which are the parts of the Boolean that don't quite line up very nicely. And all we do is I just scroll this to the side and it's going to select them and put them together. It finds the next thing along that edge and fixes it. So just like that. Now, if you don't want to do it with this one, we can scroll our mouse wheel up and it's gonna select the other half. This is selecting the errors with the object that was on the bottom and then I'm gonna move them and it's gonna join them together. If I slide my mouse wheel up, it now selects, if I just go to this to where it now shows the errors here. So this is now selecting the errors from the object that's above it. And again, I can slide that and it's gonna fix it. I actually think, and most of the time this is something you want to look for, actually if I select the one to the bottom, this is gonna give a nicer cleanup. Now in this instance, I would actually have a look at this, do that one, so I'm gonna click, and then I'm gonna do it again, Y, Boolean cleanup, and then I'm gonna select object B and probably do the same thing. This is gonna make a nicer transition. Now, just to have a look at this as a more complex choice. I'm just gonna bring in a cube and let's make that a bit bigger. And let's move that over here. And I'm gonna press control and four to turn that into a quad sphere. So I've got my quad sphere here, effectively a subdivided cube. Then I'm gonna press shift and A and I'm gonna bring in a cylinder. So let's do that. And let's make this fairly high poly. So I'm gonna go with 128. I'm gonna scale that up, especially S and on the Z axis, something like that. G that there, rotate it around, and let's just put these so they're gonna combine together. I don't know why I'd want to do this, but maybe I do. Maybe this is like a piston with a ball joint at the end. I could probably be a bit more precise with the positioning, but we'll stick with that for now. We've got a piston and we need a ball joint at the end. Now let's boolean these together. Actually, let's apply the subdivision surface first. Apply all, 
and then we're going to hide this object. So now we've got this, and this would really be a lot to go through and clean up. I mean, I've got to do this for, I mean, I don't have to, but probably each and every one of these should be cleaned up so that they're touching, so we've got less problems. So I'd want to combine that to there, that to there, and so on. I mean, this is going to take forever. So again, just go into edge mode, select an edge, Y for our mesh machine options, L select. Notice it's selected all of it straight away. This would have been a pain to select manually. I'll try that again. So if I just press Alt and select, this is not gonna work. Whereas if I select it, oh, and there is a shortcut for this. If I've selected it and then press Alt and click again, it uses the machine select anyway. So you don't have to go into the menu. And then I press Y and let's do Boolean cleanup. Now, this is one where we're gonna think through it. I could either have, again, at this one, it's automatically got the bottom one moving, or I could have this so that the top one moves. And you'll notice that hopefully, obviously, if I had this, this is gonna mess up all of the geometry of my cylinder, and that's gonna look really ugly. Whereas if I have some cleanup of just this sphere, this is hardly making an impact. You're not gonna notice this in the geometry there. So now we've got a much more clean mesh. We don't have that problem. And we've got our cylinder going into our sphere. Now, while I'm here, I'm just gonna show one other thing, which is some really fun shenanigans that we've got with Mesh Machine. If I go back into edge mode and I've got this edge selected, you'll notice if I press Y, I've got a limited number of options here. Now, if I go to edit and preferences and find where this is, so mesh machine just here, we've got this option down here of use experimental, and this has got some fun things in it. So I'm gonna select that so we're using experimental. This is things I think they're still testing out. And if there's any errors with it, I imagine you could probably report it to them and they'll be using that to help out. I've not had any issues with this. So now we're gonna press Y and we've got a lot more options. The most fun one being this offset cut. Now if I click this, you'll notice that this is now cut through both of these objects or cut into each of the objects, I should say. And we've got the options here about how wide we want that to be. And you'll notice that essentially it just goes through and destroys all of the mesh on those sides and it doesn't really create many errors with it. It's really good at calculating what it needs to do. Like I said, I haven't had any issues with this. I'm gonna go there so it's relatively small. Now, the reason this is a lot of fun is that if I press Control and B now, I can bevel this. I can bevel this join. If I just press C so it's clamped like that, like you could never normally do this. If I just Control and Z back and Shift and B this, I mean, look at the mess, like cleaning that up is gonna take forever. Do not want to have to deal with that. But offset cut, C to clamp it. And we've got this really nice bevel that we can then move to make this nice smooth object. Something like that. So now we've got this really nice piston transitioning into the ball joint at the end and it's really clean. So that's why Mesh Machine is probably quite expensive. It allows you to do some things that otherwise would be pretty much impossible. I mean, if you think about the amount of time that it would have taken you to do all of that manually, we're talking in the space of hours, whereas it's taken me seconds to minutes to do it. So once you go through a few projects with booleaning and you think about how much your own time personally and the hours you put into this, well worth the expense, in my opinion, of course. And that's without some of the other features that it also has. As always, I hope you found that useful. If you want more tips, please do subscribe or check out some of my other videos. And if there are any other tutorials that you'd like to see, do always feel free to comment in the chat. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video.